Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to Session Denali-16. When we last left our PCs, they had just battled Rizel, the Black Dragon, and it appeared to be a disaster with neither side claiming victory. We returned to find out the outcome of their foray. Blinking several times, he observed a wounded Grish leaning over him. He's back, exclaimed the Zenobian, giving the knight a rough pat on the shoulder, causing him to groan. Oh, sorry, my friend. I didn't mean to hurt you more, smirked Grish. Sir Omel attempted to rise, but was held down by a severely burned Yolanda two blades. The caustic acid had pockmarked her neck and her arm with damage to her slender armor. Go ahead and sit down. You aren't well enough yet. Looking from side to side with a great deal of pain, the knight observed Phidias and Brother Stance were each lying next to each other, also covered in blood. Are... are they... he started to say, but stopped as Yolanda shook her head. No, they are also alive, but pretty banged up. How? Why? What happened, he stammered. Grish struggled to his feet and pointed a thumb over his shoulder. Look who didn't die. A limping Harris the Mage dragged his bloody leg next to the knight. It was close enough, though, the wizard said. Are you okay, my friend? he asked the knight of Bacchus. Yes, I am. But what happened? Sitting on the bloody corpse of the dragon to rest his leg, the mage explained that he and Brother Stance had looked over the side of the cliff to see what was there when the black dragon landed on the plateau. Stance was knocked forward, but I was knocked back over the cliff. Fortunately, my ring of feather fall kicked in. I did smash against the cliffside, but it did save me from being skewered on the rocks below. After landing and regaining my senses, I used a fly spell to return up to the top of the cave opening. It was after the dragon had spewed acid, I guess, and things sounded bleak. The group listened intently and Yolanda asked him what had happened. Well, I had that scroll from the Kohoth Keep on the mainland, so I decided to use it. Turns out, it was a lightning bolt, and it cost the beats, caught the beast right in the arse. Guess you guys had heard it enough that that spell knocked it down. When I came around the corner, I found Sir Omel leaning against his sword that he had buried in the thing's eye. I tried to patch you all up as best I could, but we're out of healing potions. As the monk and rogue stirred fitfully, the other members looked at each other worried. Sir Omel spoke softly and said, All beat up, low on healing, still have to make it past the badlands filled with hobgoblins and possibly more giants. This ain't gonna be easy. No, it isn't, agreed his friends. Biting his lip, Harris piped up. I... I may have an idea. Grish and the Knight of Bacchus watched as the wizard sat at the edge of the precipice, looking out over the sea. After several minutes, Harris limped back over to his comrades and pronounced, It is done. We'll just have to see if it was successful. You two better get some rest, and I'll try and get a fire started, and we can divvy up some rations. Sir Omel attempted to rise, announcing that he would take first watch before slumping down. Grish shook his head, pointed out to the warrior, looked as bad as he felt. I will swallow my pride, spellcaster. You have the first watch. As the large warriors laid down, they were quickly overcome with fatigue. A shaking on the leg woke up the sleeping warriors as Harris leaned over them, smiling. Good news. It's time to go. Struggling to rise, the cleric and the paladin spotted their associates on the precipice of the cliff's entrance. Helping each other along, they moved to the opening, finding the early morning sun sparkling along the blue waters of the cove. Below them was the flying porpoise, along with a familiar halfling waving frantically up to them. Hey look everybody, it's Kellogg's, everyone exclaimed. 
Hello, he yelled, receiving a hello back from below, did Phidias. Uh, not to be negative, said Grish to Harris, but that's a long way down and none of us are in a shape to climb currently. I'm not sure how useful our ship is going to be, although it is a welcome sight. Sir Omel looked over the edge and shook his head in agreement. I'm sorry, mage, but I'm too confounded by this uselessness, albeit positive turn of events. Care to enlighten us? Still smiling, Harris asked the large paladin if he trusted him. Puzzled, the knight of Bacchus replied, Well, yes, yes, I trust you. You've saved us several times on this trip alone. Why do you ask? Harris slipped a copper ring onto the large man's finger and nodded to Brother Stance and Yolanda, who promptly pushed the armored knight over the side, headed for the boat. Initially screaming, the knight quickly found himself floating downward where netting was stretched across the masts of the ship. Cool, replied Phidias, and Grish nodded in agreement. Clever idea, wizard. That ring of feather falling is very useful, but how do we get it back? Well, replied Harris, I'm going to cast Fly again, and after he lands, and hopefully Kellogg's brought enough string, we can retrieve the ring that way. Worst case scenario, I fly around as many times as I need, but we'll need to be quick about it before the spell ends. Me next, me next, exclaimed Phidias. No, replied Harris, I may be able to carry you down last if we need to. I would prefer not to strand any of us. What about the treasure, quipped Yolanda Two Blades. Well, we'll have to come back for that later, replied the monk. We don't have the strength to take it now. Grish nodded and replied, Agreed, but I'm taking one of those bars back with me. The bio needs to answer a few questions about his reckless behavior. Sir Omel finally landed on the netting safely and appeared to be giving the halfling a severe tongue lashing. Boy, he looks pissed, stated the rogue. Chuckling, Yolanda smiled and said, I hate to be that boy. Watching from above, the animated argument ended and Kellogg's pulled some string out. Harris cast his spell and told the group he'd be right back. Diving off the plateau, the wizard spiraled down to the ship effortlessly, landing next to the arguing pair. Grish laughed heartily as Sir Omel turned his rage towards the mage, who threw up his hands, pointing to the knight's injury. He was escorted below as Harris returned to the top with the ring and the ball of twine. Cleric, are you ready to float? he asked Grish. The response, get me out of here, quickly escaped the large man's lips. One by one, the PCs threw themselves off the cliff, landing successfully onto the net. As Harris and Phidias stood alone, looking over the carnage, the diminutive halfling inquired if he would get to float or if he would have to be flown down on Harris's back. The mage put his hand on his shoulder and said, I have enough time to fly down, but don't lose my ring, he warned. As Phidias donned the magic circle, he ran off the precipice with a loud, Yahoo! before he began to float effortlessly down towards the ship. While doing backstrokes in mid-air, Harris flew past the happy rogue, warning him about staying on track. Phidias gazed up at the soft clouds and couldn't remember feeling more free. As his mind wandered, he began to pick up sounds of his compatriots yelling at him. Blinking back to reality, he skipped off the side of the ship and landed in the water of the cove. Bursts of laughter were heard from above as his friends laughed heartily. Harris then flew down and pulled him back on deck, sopping wet. My ring, requested the mage. Dejected, the road rogue grudgingly gave back the ring and shook the water off, soaking most of the party until his bruised ribs ached from the previous battle. Leaning against the main mast, Grish shouted to the captain, Take us to Red Bluff, sir. Looking at Harris, the bewildered cleric asked, How? Harris smiled wryly and stated, Magic message. The quip earned him a hearty pat on the back from the Zenobian. After a few hours of sailing, the vessel pulled into the port of Red Bluffs safely. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.